Education Nation and all this week, the networks of NBC Universal focus on the problems facing America's schools and how we fix them. A new NBC Wall Street Journal poll shows where people put the blame. 53% blame elected officials, 50% the parents, 41% cite teachers unions, 36% cite principals and administrators, and 30% point the finger at teachers. NBC's Matt Lauer asked President Obama whether he sees teachers unions as a problem. I am a strong supporter of the notion that a union can protect its members and help be part of the solution as opposed to part of the problem. What is also true is that sometimes that means they are resistant to change when things aren't working. Dennis Van Rokel is the president of the 3.2 million member National Education Association. Um, the president says, look, if you've got a third of your students dropping out, you can't go in and defend the status quo. Do you think that's what unions do? No, I don't. I totally agree with the president. We should not accept the status quo. It is unacceptable in America that one third of our students, or 25 percent or so, don't graduate. We need to change that. You've pointed out several cases where unions are working hand in hand with school districts and local government to try and overhaul the school systems. How is that working? Excellent. I can name sites in every state in the country uh, where our unions are working with school officials. The real secret is when the administration, the school board, and employees sit down together, reach out to parents in the community and say, you know, together, let's decide how to change this for students in our district. There's a, a documentary out now, Waiting for Superman, which seems to put a lot of blame on unions for demanding a cap on charter schools so that therefore when parents really want their kids in these innovative schools, the schools that are performing better, it's up to a lottery system to def decide the future of these students. Are you against charter schools? No, we support the concept of charter schools. When they first began, the idea was to incubate new ideas, try new things, and then build that into the system. That isn't really how it's developed. But you know, the point I think that the movie makes, and Davis Guggenheim last night mentioned it, the lottery is a, is a way of just of describing that American education should not be a lottery for students. Every student deserves a great public school in their neighborhood. So what do you make of the president's proposal that the bottom five per performing schools nationwide, that control of those failing schools be given to charter schools? I, I don't believe that charter school is a single answer. One in five of those are doing better than public school, but that means four out of five aren't. So it isn't a matter of being a public charter school or a public non-charter school. The issue is, how do we change those schools? I wanted to ask you about one of the other presidents of the president's proposals to lengthen the school year. Would the union support that? In many districts, that is already happening. In uh, Ohio, they passed a comprehensive education reform, and they plan on adding But what if it days. was significant nationwide? Well, in Ohio, it is. They're talking about adding up to 20 days. That is probably a decision that will be made by at the state level versus at the federal level because of this complex educational system we have. And are you confident these are problems that can be fixed? Absolutely. It is a complex system. We have a federal, gov federal government that doesn't pay a high percentage of funds, but they do have programs that really can partner with states. The majority of funding and state poli is, and policies at the state level, and we have 15,000 school districts. We need to figure out a way to bring all of those people to a table and have a conversation and do this together. Dennis, I appreciate your enthusiasm. I'm sure parents are glad to hear it too. Well, I was a high school math teacher for 23 years. You know, sometimes students Whoa, that's weren't, a always, job. <laughs> <laughs> my students weren't, always, weren't always enthused about math, but that was my job to make it that Dennis, way. Dennis, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, stay with MSNBC throughout the day for more of Education Nation. Teacher and former first daughter Jenna Bush Hager joins us in our next half hour and talks about whether seed schools are the key to helping inner city students. We'll be right back.